and we can look in here. We've got the old arrangement and this in a dwelling or at home itself. So let's go through what we've got here. So exactly the same arrangement in our ceiling rows and pendant. We've got our blocks at the top. We've got a block of two, which is our switching line conductor. We've got a block of three, which is usually identified as loop. And then another block of three, which is our neutral connections, but we're in the old cable colors. So let's start with neutral. And our new system, we know from our previous videos that the neutral was a blue conductor. And it will also be a blue conductor coming down in your flex that goes down to your pendant. So that would be blue in old and new systems. But we can see here that our neutral color is black. So pre-2004, the neutral color was black. So we've identified that one there as our neutral connection in a block of three. Remember, we like to leave the outside one for this flex that goes down to the pendant. OK, so that one's that's why that one's left blank. But that's a solid block of three for our neutral connections. And they're black. Our loop connection, which is our permanent line in, permanent line out and permanent line down to the switch. I know often on site people are calling that the live conductor, but it's actually the line conductor. And again, we've got a solid block of three. And this time, rather than being, as we've seen in our other videos, that connection being brown, pre-2004, the line connection was identified as red. So line in, line out and line down to the switch. That block of three there. And then on our end one, this is our switching line conductor. Again, we could have used either of the terminals. It wouldn't have mattered. But again, we like to leave the outside one free. We've got a black conductor, which isn't a neutral, which is identified with some red oversleeving, which is our switching line conductor. And we know that, again, the outside one generally is left for the flex that goes down to our pendant. So that would be on the outside one there. So if we've got a switching line this side and a neutral this side, when we operate our switch, we can turn on the lamp that's connected to the pendant. As always, we've got a connection for our circuit protective conductors in here. And we've got three of those and they're identified with green and yellow sleeving. If you're looking at a really, really, really old one, you might find it's a solid green but we're looking at green and yellow for our circuit protective conductors in here. Even 2004 had green and yellow as our CPC, our circuit protective conductor, and they're held in there. So that's our arrangement with the old cable colours. Let's just recap. So we've got black is our neutral, red in this case is our permanent line connection, and a black identified with red sleeving is our switching line conductor. And if I just bring this one in, what's really good, it used to be an exam question. Right at the top there, it actually says the rated value of voltage, and it's 250 volts. We know the nominal value of voltage for a single phase circuit is 230 volts, but the rated value of this ceiling rows and pendant is 250 volts. And that links in almost nicely with the voltage range. It can go up 10 and down six from that 230 volt range. So plus 10 is 253 volts, which is very close to the, the maximum voltage rating of here of 250. So that used to be an old exam question. It may still come back up. So there are connections within our ceiling rows and pendant. Let's just move it down and look at the switch. So we'll be taking our permanent line, our switching line and CPC connection down to our one gang. So one gang meaning we've got one switch on the front, one gang, and when I turn it over, we've got a one-way switch. Our permanent line connection now in red comes in and we've put it into common. It wouldn't matter in a one-way switch whether it was in common or normally identified the other one as L1, but we like to put it into common. That's our permanent line connection. And our black one, again, which now isn't a neutral, is a switching line conductor and is identified by red sleeving. And this time it's gone into a connection, which is L1. Sometimes it's identified as one way. So that makes our switch. So when we operate our switch, we put the permanent line through the switch onto our black, identified with red sleeve in our switching line conductor. We turn on the light. And obviously when we operate the switch, we take that line connection off from here and the light goes off. We have got a fully insulated system here, but our circuit protective conductor is held within the earth terminal within the back of the box, just in case it's changed either the switch or back box. It's usually the switch, isn't it? The back boxes, if they're sunk in the wall, are metal and would need connecting to the CPC. But often at college, we're using surface accessories. And at college, I used to make some of my learners change the light switch from a plastic one to a metal one, meaning that even if they were going onto a plastic box, because that's generally what we had at college, the CPC needed disconnecting and connecting to the metal light switch because that was an exposed conductive part.